Are you afraid of coding interviews? Today we're going to have a look at the mock coding interview session for one of my subscribers. The coding interview that we're going to have a look today is a fairly typical coding interview for a junior developer or an experienced test automation engineer. Our candidate is proficient in Python and that's the language that we are going to use today. If you want to participate in the next mock interview session, feel free to reach me out by using any means, drop in a comment, LinkedIn, or anything else. And a short reminder for my patrons, all my patrons are going to have an access to a mind map with the quick and major highlights of the today's session. So let's get into that. Lovely. So the recording is started and welcome to this mock interview. And today we are going to attempt a live code interview session for a QA engineer position uh, with the Python programming language. I'm going to be the interviewer, you're going to be the interviewee, and that's going to be a little bit just a role play. So I might be trying to uh, ask hard questions, uh, being dumb or anything. Uh, so it is a role play really. After the role player is over, uh, we will say stop and I will do my best to provide you with an actionable feedback. And I also hope that some of the viewers will also give an actionable feedback for you. For example, if I miss something or if they disagree with me. Um, let's see how it goes. Um, so first of all, let me uh, skip the introducing myself part because that's not very interesting. Uh, but in a typical, uh, in a good job interview, the interviewer will introduce themselves and that's important part of making you comfortable. Let's uh, let's skip this part and just jump into the interview yourself. So if you can tell me about yourself a bit. Oh, well, uh, I am QA engineer. I work uh, as QA engineer for five years. Uh, one and a half years, uh, approximately, I make uh, auto tests and I work as auto QA using Python language. Um, I've got an experience in mobile testing and in desktop testing on Windows and Macos. Um, my auto test I create for desktop application on Windows and on Macos. And uh, it's considered to UI tests. Uh, I use a security IDE uh, that uh, makes possible to use uh, UI element as I have not the word a variable. As a variable. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. No worries. That's not a no. language assessment. <laughs> <laughs> good. Mm. All right. Yeah, sounds good. And regarding your programming experience uh, so if you can tell me probably the most exciting thing that you did uh, during your work as a QA automation engineer um, uh, the tasks that uh, are given to me is to automate um, the routine operation uh, such as adding multiple elements to base um, uploading and downloading a large database to, to cloud and back um, these were uh, routine operations uh, for testers and uh, I think to my work, uh, they are automated and uh, uh, the manual testers can only uh, view logs and analyze them. Uh, the last project I finished uh, is smoke test of the application, uh, is the automated smoke test of the application. Uh, the QA engineer don't need to make smoke test of desktop application for now. It makes my script. Okay. Right. Lovely. And what are your future goals? What are you going to achieve in, let's say, five years from now? Five years from now? It's so far future. I don't know. Will it be war? Or will it be something else? Will it be electricity in the world? Uh, but. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wishes, I want to be a good, uh, a perfect specialist. I want to grow. I want to have a lot of money. I want to <laughs> have a, a team uh, which I would lead. And uh, I want to have um, the more technical experience than I do now. Okay. Okay. Right. So... As I mentioned, today's interview will be essentially two parts. First part is 
just a couple of questions regarding Python. And the second part is a, I hope, fun coding challenge. So let's start with Python. You mentioned that you're using the Python for your uh, work. And why it is Python and not, for example, Java or any other programming language? Well, uh, it was situation uh, choice. Uh, the SQL IDE, IDE uh, allows to use Java and allows to use Python. I looked at these languages and decided that Python is more flexible and more interesting, and that's why I chose it. Okay, sounds good. And uh, regarding the Python, you mentioned it was flexible. And what are other key features of Python as a programming language? What make it different from other programming languages? Mm -hmm. It is object oriented. Okay. Uh, I prepared for tasks and forgot the theory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, and probably let me just give you a short suggestion on the spot. If you ever feel lost during an interview, uh, and if you stuck for, let's say, 10 seconds, it's better to say, uh, like something, let's probably skip this question. I'm not, I don't think I'm ready to answer this now rather than just keeping you waiting. If the interviewer is good, they will help you to not stuck because interviewers, they want you to succeed. They don't want to, I mean, good interviewers, they don't want you to fail on the interview. Uh, so uh, if you feel stuck, instead of the awkward silence, you just say, okay, uh, let's probably skip this question. I, I'm not sure I can answer this because uh, what you want here is to shorten the time of awkwardness and shine so you fail on this question it's not a big deal you don't want to fail on all the questions and for this you need to move to them okay thank you all right so the next question regarding python we don't have many of them don't worry uh so what are the main data types in python i i am muted um, i'm sorry uh it was important call please repeat your questions oh yeah absolutely fine that's actually a very good thing uh so what are the main data types in python All oh, right. Um, uh, numbers, strings, sets, doubles, uh, lists, and dictionaries. Okay, right. Uh, sounds good. Uh, and actually, again, another suggestion on this spot. If you need to interrupt an interview because you have an important call, uh, what you would better to do is to say, excuse me, I need to answer this call. I need to open the door or I need, I need to go to the toilet. So interviewer knows why you are not responding. Uh, so that's, that's going to be helpful. And, and that's okay if you have kids, if you have something uh, and you need to answer uh, a phone because uh, it, it might be important, really. So that's totally fine. Uh, uh, going to the last question regarding the Python. So if I need to have a different versions of Python on my computer, because I work on different projects and one, for example, requires Python 3.6 and another requires Python 3.8, how do I do that? Well, uh, you can keep them in containers. Okay. Uh, um, it's the simplest way. Uh, you can create uh, two operation systems and uh, on one put uh, one, by one Python version and on second by put second Python version. Okay. Mm. You can uh, use them on, in cloud on a various machine, for example. Okay. Mm. Yeah, let's probably just stop here. There, there was one particular thing that I was trying to go to here. Is it, it's called virtual environment. Uh, in a Python, you can actually have a virtual environment and that will help you to have different Python versions on a computer. Uh, you probably need to double check this because it's not as flexible as containers, but actually quite simple and quite cool. I will send you a link to the video regarding virtual environment after this interview. So okay. no worries about that. Now we're going to the coding challenge. So what I would suggest doing now, I'm going to send you a link uh, to the Hacker Rank challenge. And we will need to just share a screen and we will try to solve this challenge uh, and see how it goes. If you ever feel that you don't have enough information about the something, you can ask uh, me if you think you need to Google some function name or something, uh, that's also totally fine. 
uh, the probably the only thing which is not fine if you try to Google the answer to this uh, question because that's well, that's that's not so cool. Uh, so let me send you the link. It should be in your chat now. I see. Yeah, and as soon as you're ready, feel free to share your screen. Okay. I have opened. Uh, I need to sign up somehow. Uh, you can use Google for that. There must be a button uh, to use Google. Okay. That's what I do. <laughs> I never Just sign up for them. Uh, well, yes. Try now. Accept. I'm here to... um. Uh, 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 as a candidate, I think. Oh, let me. Yeah, if you share a screen, I will just help you to navigate. Uh, please this. let me share a screen. Yep. This is turned out by you. Turned out by you. Okay. Uh, let me. Uh, right. Yep. You should be able to share a screen now. Yeah, I am. This is um, so... lovely. Okay, so it's not. Uh, let, let me open. Uh, so if you click on the link once again, uh, because you were not registered, it, it just led to you to a different place. So if you okay. go to the chat and link to the. Yeah. This one? Yep. Good. So. Uh, on the right, you can select a programmable language, and that's going to be Python 3 in our case. Uh -huh. Python 3? Yeah. And on the left is the problem description. Huh. <laughs> We've got uh, two inputs, the quantity of people and the quantity of days, right? Uh, in this case, you don't have the quantity of people. I believe if you start with just two people, uh, and that goes... Uh, oh, actually, no, that's, uh, that's not true. You start with five people. Well, the five is constant. Yes, it is. Uh, if you read the first paragraph, they launch a new product. They advertise it to exactly five oh, people yeah. on social media. Yes. So on the first day, half of those five people like uh, and share this with three friends. Mm -hmm. I'll write and sync, and then I'll um, somehow uh, correct it. Okay. All right. Uh, so a good interviewer at this point will start trying to help you. So what's going on here is that you feel a little bit stuck because you're trying to solve the whole program. The problem with this approach is that unless you have solved this program uh, more than once, uh, you cannot solve the whole program just like that. Uh, what you can do, though, is to try to solve it bit by bit. So what uh, the first you could do is to assume the simple possible case. For example, let's say the day is one. What would be the answer? Uh, the answer would be uh, six. For the day one. Oh, no, the answer would be two. Exactly. Let's try to write two. Mm -hmm. So how we get two from five and n. Mm -hmm. We've got like this. Okay, uh, so we'll, let's uh, that, that probably going to return us two after some tweaks. So what we need to do here is to actually return the value, right? Mm -hmm. Let's repeat. Yeah, uh, so we need to return a value. Right now, our function is not returning anything. Oh, yes. Something. Uh, in this case, you don't print. You you write return x because uh, it will be printed by uh, the uh, by the hacker itself. Return. You just return okay. x. Yes. Okay. And it 
doesn't have to be in square brackets, I think. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be in brackets. So if you run the code, you click run code. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Like this? Yeah, like that. And then if you click run code. Okay. And then it is going to complain. Because... And it complaining is because you are calling the function floor, which is not defined. Mm -hmm. Well, so I should define floor function. Uh, well, not necessarily. Um, in this case, what you need to do is to use uh, integer division. You don't need to floor anything because if you divide integers, uh, you will it will be automatically floored. So what you do is x double slash two. That's uh, and yeah, the the I don't know if if it's called forward slash. Uh, wow. So just like division, but uh, in, in the slash to the different direction. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, like that. And then run code. Wrong answer. Yeah, it is a wrong answer because they uh, want uh, they, they want your output to be for the uh, day three, and you are re uh, returning nine. But what you can do is a click a uh, taste against a custom input. Um, if you scroll down a bit, you see test against the custom input, just above the wrong answer, there is a checkbox. And then you can input one. And then you click run code. And you mm -hmm. are returning the right answer. So now let's see for the day two, how long it's gonna be. Well, I mean, for, for the day two, it's obviously going to fail. But let's think, what should be the answer for the day two? Well, the answer should be two again. And, uh, uh, no, I don't think it should, it should be, be two. two. If you scroll down the task uh, and you see this nice picture, yeah, scroll down it and down. Have five. Yeah, for the day two, it should be five. Uh, wow. And so we should use the N somehow in our formula. Yeah. L let's try to understand why it is five. Uh, because we... If you go to the... A diagram probably is going to be easier to understand, at least for me. I'm more of a graphical person. Well, um, on the day one, two people shared the, adver the advertisement. And yeah. on the day two, one people shared the adver advertisement. Yep. And yeah. every people share exactly to three people for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we have five. Mm. Uh, so it's something like um, that we should divide two uh, on half. Uh, don't think so. What you need to do probably is to so you know you have two people who liked this right. Now you need to uh, calculate the total number of shares they're going to make, which is six. So essentially mm -hmm. multiply two by three. Okay. So um, And I guess and okay. Let's see what's going to happen if you do this. <laughs> You've got a two, of course. Um, why? Because mm -hmm. and we should add. Well, why didn't we get C4? 
we should get from, but we got to y. Ah, uh, understood. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, now you got four. Well, that's not five. <laughs> this is not five, right? Not six. Yeah. So what what is going on here is uh, you need to use for loop for that. Essentially, what you need to do is to simulate every day. Uh, mm -hmm. so for the first day, you have a total number of shares is five. So then, I need uh, four for n from one to input. Uh, I would say for range uh, four, e in range n because mm -hmm. n is going to be the number of days. All right. Okay. So let me probably make it slightly the other way around. Let me, if you don't mind, to just uh, solve this problem uh, while you're watching. And then I will give you feedback. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what I was going here is I didn't start recording, but I was starting to explain what's uh, going on there. So just uh, briefly to get you up to speed. One of the main thing is you don't want to use a cryptic uh, numbers like five and three, why it's five here, why it's three here, uh, and uh, cryptic uh, variable names. So I'm using a very descriptive variable names. Then if we are talking about the progression and it is clearly a progression, then it usually means we need to have a loop and we need to have some kind of um, variable where, which will accumulate the result. Uh, so we have this cumulative. Now number of the posts on the day is another variable which I'm using to keep track of the post made on the particular day because that is actually a number of uh, likes, uh, or actually not, not number of likes, is the uh, variable that will help me to calculate number of likes today. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking this here, number of likes is number of posts on the day. Then I'm adding this number of likes to the cumulative. And now I need to calculate the new value for the number of posts on the day, which I will be able to use in the next uh, iteration, if I have to. And that will be essentially number of likes multiplied by number of shares. Every like shares to three people by definition. And if I'm not mistaken, that's going to solve our five and three and probably everything else. Yeah? Two, yeah. two works, three works. And now I think that's going to work uh, for everything. I just submit code. Yeah, we solved the challenge. That's not the only way to solve the challenge, uh, but it is one of the simplest way to solve the challenge, I would say. Um, so that's pretty much it. What I would say should be an outcome here and probably something to remember when you write the code. First of all, um, is you need to think aloud. If you feel stuck, uh, you want your interviewers know why you're stuck. So they can help you to unstuck. That's one thing. The other thing, avoid any kind of cryptic um, name of variables. X, Y, G. It should be descriptive because you don't want to think what this variable mean now when you already stressed with the interview and you already stressed with the challenge. And finally, if you see a progression, the simplest way to solve it is usually a loop. Uh, which we used here. Um, that's probably it for this task. Now going to the feedback. Uh, well, at this point, I do see why you might not be very successful with the interviews. The good news is that it is solvable. And I will try to help you to solve this. First of all is that the mind map that I was using for the interview. The interesting thing is, is that I skipped some questions if I thought that you would not likely to answer them in a good way. And that's what happens in the interview as well. Uh, so that's the indication. If interview ends early, it might mean that you're not in a uh, good place at this point. But why I'm showing you this mind map is that mind map is something that you can use for self-reparation. 
Uh, and in your case, uh, what you need to do is for the general Python, you just Google, let's say 100 most common Python interview questions and you read them and you learn them by heart. And then coding challenges. And there is only one way to be good at coding challenges. And since I already introduced you to Hacker Run platform, it's not the only platform for that, but it is good enough platform and probably good enough for you because Hacker Run usually uh, is not very challenging. So you, what you need to do is you need to go to the Hacker Run preparer and go to the problem solving. Mm -hmm. And in the problem solving kit, you go to difficulty easy. And you look for the success rate. This success rate means how successful other people were solving the challenge. You don't want to uh, work on stuff which is very difficult. So if you see success rate less than 90%, that's probably not what you want just yet. So you go for hard race, you see the success rate is very good here. PDF designer, Utopian Cree, this sort of thing. And you just solve the task every day, one task a day. Now, uh, the other thing that I notice is that you are not thinking aloud. You might have uh, an idea that when you're solving the task, it's about the task. A task is important, but it's not as important as to understand why you uh, and how you think. Uh, you might be surprised, but it's totally fine to fail a task if you fail it for the right reason. Uh, for example, if you were thinking about some advanced case or uh, you were trying to solve a very interesting challenge, like for example, if I would say, like, I know that I can solve this task in two minutes uh, using for a loop. I will try to find a more efficient and faster way to do this. And then I was trying, I, I failed, but uh, I failed not because I did not, uh, I wasn't able to solve this task entirely. It's because I was trying to solve this task in a, some kind of uh, cool manner. So uh, what I'm trying to say here, when you practice your coding challenges, you need to record yourself and think aloud guide yourself and then you need to watch yourself and try to improve yourself next time so every day one task not more than one task one task is enough it will take uh, probably from 10 minutes to one hour of your time a day record yourself and then listen to yourself and then try to be better next day that's it and when you do this part of things what i'm suggesting is to have an another mock interview so you can see the progress let's say I'm giving you a month for that. Okay. And in a month, we have another mock interview. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, one more thing. I have I had my notes somewhere, which I lost. Okay, here I am. Uh, regarding the uh, thing, you need to probably prepare one or two success stories. Uh, so when I was asking you about the most exciting thing you did, you mentioned just a typical working activity, but, uh, well, I mean, that's totally fine. We all work on work, right? But if you have any kind of interesting, uh, example, uh, let's say, which would create a wow effect, that would be great to share. So I don't know, in your case, if you can say, uh, I might, I, moved on one project which didn't have any automated tests and I was able to write automated smoke test in a week. So we saved, I don't know, four hours a week and that is huge return of investment. Even though it's not actually a huge deal on like university uh, scale, it's still something which creates a wow effect. There was nothing, you went there, you did something fairly basic, but it still made a major improvement. So try to think what you can use as an ex this kind of thing. Uh, and if you don't have something like this, you need to try to find an opportunity on your work to do something like that, to make some kind of achievements. Um, and then when you uh, will be asked about your goals, uh, there is nothing wrong with what you mentioned. Uh, I mean, if, if you ask me as a person, uh, that's totally fine. I also want money and stability and this sort of thing. But uh, an interviewer wants to hear something different from you. They want you to say something which they will be 
able to use in five years. So, for example, uh, you could answer, uh, you actually gave a couple of hints. So, in five years, I want to lead a team. So, in five years lifespan, I'm, uh, you can say, in five years, I am planning to grow technically wise and soft skills wise. So, I can successfully lead a whole team of automation engineers on your project or in your company or build, I don't know, test automation uh, learning curriculum. Just try to find it what it is. Uh, if you ask me, I like teaching people, so I would probably try to build some kind of teaching curriculum. Uh, if you ask someone else, uh, some people don't like to interact with other people at all. So they would, for example, like to solve uh, very complex challenges that no one else can solve in the company. But it should be something which um, resonates with the interviewer because they're trying to make an investment in you. And what was else? Let me see. Oh, well, that actually was it. Uh, you need probably a little bit more practice with interviewing and uh, you need to be able to um, navigate from places where you're stuck uh, in a way uh, that um, doesn't look awkward. So uh, you, as I mentioned, you need to minimize the number of awkwardness. That is because uh, you might be a great uh, engineer, but in the one hour interview span, there's just as much time for people to see you. And if you get stuck for five minutes, you just spent quite a big chunk of your time on uh, something which is not helping you to get the job. So it's okay to say, I don't know, let's move to something else. I will show you what I know. Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you kind of want to guide your um, interviewer. Let me, uh, well, probably let me wrap up on this. And then uh, before wrapping up, if you have any kind of feedback for me, that would be great. It's something new for me uh, that the interview uh, goes not for um, giving me um, any um, rate, any rate, but uh, to explain me how to speak uh, correctly. Uh, it's uh, it's very good. I think I'm uh, I'm very grateful for 